Hey, welcome everybody to today's special Thanksgiving episode live stream. Uh, if you're watching on Ganja World, but if you're watching on YouTube, happy Thanksgiving from here. Uh, and let's talk about something in China today, because uh, I'm actually going to have a video out for this too, but I thought it'd be better to do a live stream, which is on the iPhone factory Foxconn in Zhengzhou City in China. Uh, what's been happening there? So if you remember a month ago, there was a, a whole riot, basically. Um, well, not really a riot. It was more like a massive walkout where people were doing this like prison style, prison escape, climbing over fences. And they were walking home like, on barefoot, not barefoot, on foot. Um, and they, they were also getting rides with in the back of like a truck uh, to, to kind of basically escape from the Fox com compound. Uh, because there was a huge lockdown order and then all the people there didn't want to, you know, be mixed in with positive uh, COVID patients who are still told to work, basically. And uh, people started running away. Uh, now, basically, what happened was that created a big, massive worker shortage. And uh, because now is the season for Foxconn to actually fulfill a lot of its holiday orders for iPhones, right? In particular, the iPhone 14 Pro, which just came out a month ago. Uh, so for Foxconn to now suffer a worker shortage was a massive issue. And so therefore, the local government uh, issued a worker hiring notice to surrounding areas and basically across China. And what happened was uh, hundreds of thousands of people signed up for this particular contract, which basically says, you know, they'll get paid something like 340 yuan a day, but it works out to be about, you know, uh, 15, 16 dollars a day. Let me just do a quick conversion. Yuan to US dollars. Yeah, so about like 40 US dollars a day. Um, and then they get a bonus in the end if they work and fulfill all of these obligations. So that was the contract that people signed when they agreed to come work, right? And um, they were expecting that type of compensation. But what happened was when they got to the compound this week in particular, because they had to isolate once you get there. And by the way, the entire city is under lockdown orders as we speak. Uh, but but once they got there, they realized that they were being fooled and they were cheated out of to basically sign a new contract that has much lower compensation than what they were they prior like agreed to uh, to take up the job in the first place. And according to some of the um, discussions online, it, it seems that uh, because there was a an issue with workers leaving before there was a huge hole that they had to fill. Some of the current hires were actually employees that were that used to be kind of like retired, like veteran soldiers or um, very bottom level uh, officials. And, and so there was there was sort of this campaign to get village heads to kind of promote uh, employment opportunities to the people in their village, uh, especially in rural areas. And by the way, this is this is people across China, right? A lot of migrant workers. And so there was a huge protest uh, starting on the evening of October 22nd, which ironically speaking is actually uh, just a few hours after the top chief party secretary from uh, Henan had shown up to the particular compound because Foxconn is a huge, huge economic um, a source for, for the particular province since it is the main iPhone pr production facility in all of China. And so you're, you're seeing like four, to four out of five iPhones coming out of this particular compound we're talking about. So having that not fulfill Apple's order is going to be a huge issue, like a huge part of the income uh, that the, the province won't be getting. So what they were saying was the party chief at least was saying that you got to work with your workers, you got to get things settled, right? People are, are, are being kind of cheated out. You got to be fair to them, blah, 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 all of these things, right? So people thought that, you know, this was the end of it. Um, but it turns out, like thousands of people started walking out into basically protesting on the street, saying that they demand fair shares of their uh, work. And uh, these people hadn't even started working, by the way, they were just out of quarantine, right? And then it turns out, uh, whoever, maybe the local authorities, maybe the Foxconn factory, maybe even the provincial government, who knows, but they send in riot police, people in like batons and riot shields. And, and, and uh, they were all dressed like this. Let me just show you. So, and by the way, there's a huge timeline gap, uh, so to speak, because it happened overnight, but then it kind of continued into the next morning, which was yesterday. And then now there's like a little bit of, um, 
I guess you can say a ceasefire agreement as long as some of the people get paid, right? Some of, some of them have reported saying that they got paid a 10,000 yuan compensation, which is about $1,400. But then who knows how many actually got paid, but also those people that did get paid, the, the requirement and the condition for getting paid was that they had to get on a bus and leave. So they get 8,000 yuan when they step on a bus. And then once they leave that particular area, their phones will show it, they get the extra 2,000 yuan compensation marking the $10,000 uh, or yuan, which works it out to around to be like $1,400, right? So not a lot of payment for, for the suffering, but people are basically leaving again. So some people are joking that this is the second mass exodus of the uh, <laughs> Foxconn factory, and maybe the Foxconn factory is cursed, who knows? Uh, but seeing photos like this, right? All of the people dressed in white, they're like security, they're police, uh, they're, they're the, uh, the pe so-called peacekeeping officials, right? And um, we don't actually have the exact timeline as to where some of the videos, uh, when exactly it happened. But basically in China now, anytime a person tries to live stream something about the particular case in Zhengzhou with Foxconn, uh, their live stream will be cut. And Weibo, which is China's like Twitter, hadn't censored everything until yesterday. So in the morning when I was checking the news on Weibo, things were still being talked about, right? In Foxconn and Zhengzhou, what was happening there by the afternoon, which was like early morning in Beijing, um, all of that had been censored and scrubbed. So that's very interesting. But anyways, so, you know, you have videos like this. You, you have people basically running around getting um, attacked by these people dressed in white. And you can see in the background, right? You got, you got tons of white guard, COVID guards just ganging up, ganging up on people. And then you have videos like this where it basically shows different angles of the clash, right? You have, and, and then now this is the part where it gets interesting because seeing how many people are on the streets, uh, reports are saying there's thousands of people. But if you really look at the sheer number of videos and just uh, the, the, the amount of clash that, you know, if they dispatch like thousands of COVID guards or police officers, I'd imagine um, just based on them kind of like fighting on an equal ground, it seems that they definitely were in numbers, like the workers were in the numbers of tens of thousands, perhaps even more. Um, but what demonstrates to us is the fact that people are fed up with whatever conditions they were told that the, the compensation was going to be. Um, the other part of this, so that's the first part, right? There was the compensation part. The second part is actually they were putting people from the... So they had these dormitories set up, right? Inside the dormitories, they didn't split the people who were testing COVID, uh, positive for COVID, with the people who were just arriving. And so you had a mixture of people who were basically like, if you got infected, you were still in the same room, same dormitory as your other workers were not. Uh, there was a clear disregard for safety, right? And, you know, aside from here, we know that some of the COVID cases, like they're not really pneumonia, uh, pneum uh, the cases with going infections into your lungs anymore, especially with Omicron. But in China, the, the scare for COVID is huge, right? So you got to understand that. It's a very sensitive issue. Um, so for them, you, you put positive cases together with those regular workers, that's bound to be a bad time for them, right? They're super scared about it. But you can see in this video, this is like a huge scene. Like there's basically, you got to understand the <laughs> the Foxconn factory compound is like um it's near the airport but it's so big it's like a mega city right people call it iphone city just because there's so many dorms there's so many factory sex uh, sections there's so many uh different production lines so you have a huge huge number of workers in its peak usually which is now and then spring summer you have uh close to millions of workers working in, in foxconn right just out of this particular compound, but also in across various parts of China as well. Um, and then let me just show you this. So this was actually, I think, from last night, uh, or I guess their last night, which is our this morning, or uh, no, their last night, but our morning. Okay, so this was uh, the night of, as you can see here in the bottom, there's literally COVID guards with riot shields, and, and the, but, but they're, they're getting attacked by these people with like metal beams or clubs or whatnot. And they keep throwing these fences at them, right? So you can see in some instances throughout the night, uh, they were actually outnumbered. So we're talking, you know, two nights of protests and it turned violent. If we are to believe that the 
the, the cause of the violence was actually the police officers attacking protesters first, then it seems to make sense that videos like these would show up. So here's, um, let's see, not this one. Yeah, so this is a scene that shows basically where the cop cars are coming from. Like they're taking these shuttle buses and they're, they're, they're shipping them in like, uh, and this is very interesting, right? So whenever there's a protest in China, they usually ship them like overnight, just hundreds of buses, like one after another, carrying like 60 people per bus. And they all just show up and they, they start beating people up, right? Um, this was actually, so the, the Zhengzhou city, if you remember anything, or Henan, or if any of those words sound mean anything to you, last year there was that huge flood in this exact same city uh, where, you know, many people died, but they covered this whole thing up. And then there was the, the banking uh, boom situation, banking boom, banking bust situation in this particular city and the province as well. And that was earlier this year, right? So for some odd reason, uh, this particular city has just gone through so many uh, social and political issues in the past two years that like people know what's like Zhengzhou is not a good place to be right now. And then um, last night I was looking up these videos like you can see here. So this is the streets uh, where you basically have barricades and cop cars lining up. Um, who knows what they're doing right now? Uh, I'm trying to find a video. Let me see if I can find it. But there was basically like um, somebody took somebody took a, a video of the highway last night. Let me see if I can find that. Um, maybe it's here. Let's see. Uh, this one. So I'll put this up here. Let me see. I can. Uh, no. Okay, there we go. So th this is according to locals from uh, the the first night. As you can see, like they're walking down the street. And then all they're seeing is just cop cars, right? And then they're still being busted. in. So what I'm thinking is if there's hundreds of, uh, not hundreds, tens of, tens of thousands of people who are fed up with the, um, the condition, the working condition there, I'd imagine there's at least five to 10 times more police officers being used. Because I was getting sources that said people from all over the province are actually sending in their police forces gathering in this particular city to keep order, right, so to speak, but really just to beat them up. Um, there's two types of thinking here. Basically, one is can, the, well, the, the central question is, how is this going to end, right? One side thinks that um, this is going to end badly. People are going to get hurt because what a lot of the people were saying that the terms of the negotiation was that you either get paid or they pay you uh, or they're going to continue to riot. The other side thinks that this will end pretty well, considering the fact that if you take a um, analysis of what the central government's thinking right now amidst all this, right? For example, Xi Jinping, is he willing to sacrifice a huge amount of production value uh, in producing iPhones, which is a huge economic issue for China, uh, to, to, to sacrifice that for political gains, right? Zero COVID, you must keep order, et cetera. So are you going to beat people up? And by the way, this is becoming like an international thing. People have been reporting it. All the Western media has been reporting, right? So this has been an issue that's already drawing a lot of embarrassment to China. Will, which path will Xi Jinping choose, right? Is he going to choose to violently suppress them like what they had done, you know, June 4th, 1989, or any of the other protests they've been doing, which is using police and riot police to basically beat up protesters? Or do they go the, the, the route of being softer compensate them, solve it with money, and just let this whole thing die down. But the thing, the, the interesting thing about this whole event was the fact that there's clearly a rebellion against whatever that, uh, whoever was, was doing the work of writing up the contract, and basically the workers are fed up, right? But the not a lot of people within the protest is actually recognizing what the systemic problem really is, which is COVID lockdowns, right? Like they understand that there's the frustration of it. I doubt a lot of people that are protesting really knows that the core issue of all of this is actually the Chinese Communist Party. What they might seeing is, and I see a lot of this on Chinese social media as well these days, which is that they're saying, oh, everybody, you know, look at this. This is like a classic case of 
Marxist, communist uh, social revolution. You have the workers rising up against, uh, you know, the proletariats rising up against the capitalists, right? The, the bourgeoisies, uh, these factory owners, the capitalistic um, foreign forces, all of these things. They're basically turning this whole event, in their mind at least, into one about communist revolution. When in fact, it is communism in China that has done this to them in the first place. So that, I thought that was very interesting. And some of them were saying like, oh, like to people in China, they're saying that you got to go read up Marx. You got to go read up, uh, you know, Lenin, um, because this is, a, this is modern day communism on the display, right? But um, if you take a, a look at the image here, you have, let, let's see this one. You have people, so this was actually from the first night. Um, and then the, these videos here show, this is the new one. This is basically showing what the conditions in the dorms look like, right? You have so many people uh, stuck in one place. You have bunk beds and you have, um, it doesn't even look like you have rooms. It's basically a hall and you have, you know, lines of bunk beds. So the condition is definitely uh, pretty bad for, for how many people they've hired, right? But um what I think is also very interesting is the fact that there's the context of what happened a month ago, right? You have a massive walkout. You had hundreds of thousands of people basically quit their job um, because they knew that their lives were on the line. So you have a huge hole you have to fill. But then it didn't seem like over the month or so that the authorities or whoever's in control really learned the lesson of keeping people, right? So I'll show you some more videos of these. Um, this is a video that showed what the aftermath of the whole like um, escape looked like. So this is one of their dorms, right? Super high buildings, lots of uh, lots of uh, houses or not houses, rooms. But you can see after everybody left, they started piling all of their luggage. Like people just scrambled, like scrambled to just get out of there, right? Nobody was trying to you know stay around gathering all their stuff like when that lockdown order came a month ago people were just gonna leave so as you can see the sheer amount of clothes that they're throwing out it didn't look like people were willing to stay for that amount of money that they were getting right um now if you can imagine if things didn't improve over the month uh since then like so now the second wave what are they going to think that people are going to do right stay for that mere amount of ten thousand yuan just in case they get COVID, you know, they're locked down there. And we're getting things like back then, uh, unsanitary con living condition. There was not enough supply and food. There were, there were already cases of reporting of death in particular rooms where people were stuffed inside to kind of uh, fend for themselves and recover from COVID. So it's, it's, it's a very tragic situation uh, all around. But I just think if we consider the fact that are people today, three years after COVID, right, in China in particular, you know, in the West, we were, we were very against the idea of lockdowns uh, because of how much psychological harm it had done to kids, because how much it had uh, basically caused a temporary collapse of the economy, which we're still dealing with the aftermath, you know, two years today after that particular period. And we're looking at a situation where you had rights taken away from you for the sake of public health, right? In China, it's, it's a that same scenario, but taken up 10 times more than what we are experiencing here. Uh, in every single province in China, there's a working group, like a task force for coronavirus pandemic prevention. And because of that health crisis that they're seeing it as it's this such extreme COVID measure prevention in China, that particular task force was uh, has basically taken uh, concentrated power to itself in every province. So you, what the traditional government structure would look like in a normal society, you know, you have your provincial officials, you have your city officials, you have your health officials, they're all separate things, right? But now because of the, they made it the, such a big health crisis, that particular health task force is has all of the power to dispose uh, all the resources at its disposal to use to control and to basically command whatever that province is doing and, and just do it based on what the needs of that task force really is and that task force is directly assigned by Xi Jinping right the Chinese leader so when things comes down to like lockdowns where to go how to do it uh who to lock down 
it's all the task force that's doing all of the commanding. And so there's really a lot, not a lot of say for that particular province. And this is also on a bigger context. About a week or two ago, China actually had a um, this new type of guideline called there was 20 guidelines that they had released that basically says uh, we're going to ease the pandemic restrictions a little bit and we're going to do something called like precision uh, pandemic control, which basically is just quarantine and isolation on a much smaller scale. And less than a week later, that particular set of guidelines were basically trashed uh, for <laughs> Because those guidelines were not in line with Xi Jinping's one-stop shot, kind of like lockdown, uh, mass testing and masking and, and all of these things. And so those guidelines were trashed. And then the new, all of the officials had basically been given some level of autonomy as to how to control and manage the pandemic, right? But then after that, uh, 20 new guidelines were, were trashed. People were super confused. Some of them were doing different things. Others were following orders. And then all on top of this is the fact that the economy at all levels in China is at its worst. And it's never getting better because once Xi Jinping set his eyes on zero COVID, he has decided that political control and political power is always going to come before the economy, which means that provinces and even cities like Zhengzhou, where you have Foxconn that's dealing with a massive order for, for iPhone, uh, there's a huge chance that Xi Jinping, because of political correctness, because his way of keeping po uh, the, the politics before everything else, there's a huge chance that he might disregard the profit that they get from Foxconn and just say that you're going to control the riot and you're just going to suppress everything just because we need to keep stability, right? That's a huge factor. Of course, we don't know if he's going to do that, but I think it's pretty dumb to do it. Uh, but then again, given what we've seen so far, we've been covering so many different things about China. It's it's you can't think of it as a rational person. You got to think of it like you're a crazy person when you're dealing with um, things coming out of China, because it just doesn't make sense for you to drive away hundreds of thousands of workers from a particular factory just because you can't fulfill their needs of uh, you know paying them properly and then also giving them a working and sanitary working environment. And. What I also found interesting about this whole thing is basically what does that mean for the rest of China, right? Uh, there's always, when I first saw the videos about what was happening in Foxconn, my first thoughts were like, is this something like Hong Kong in 2019, where you had hundreds of thousands of people on the street every day protesting against that draconian national security law? which would allow Beijing to extradite anybody they, they think is, is a, cr a criminal to China to be punished in mainland China. Um, the people of Hong Kong, of course, this was more than a, a, an uh, economic problem like Foxconn mainly is. It's more of a political problem. But it didn't change the fact that people were fed up with the way that they've been lied to for so long by the Chinese regime to say that, you know, one country, two systems, uh, Hong Kong has its autonomy, 50 years of uh, autonomy for Hong Kong. Like all of these promises were broken for Hong, for Hong Kongers, right? So for Henan, uh, for Zhengzhou here, uh, Foxconn, I wonder if the same thing is happening with people are, who are fed up with the lies that they've been told by the regime. Uh, what I said earlier about people on Weibo saying that this is a communist revolution, those people were brainwashed, right? But I don't... I don't see that there's not another group of people within this this whole protest that um, that are slowly realizing that what they're seeing is is in fact a big lie, and then the the, the government is not really doing it in their favor. And I think after many months of um, COVID, I mean, all all of the China Chinese people that we're we're talking to today, you pick anybody, they'd have at least experienced at least one or two lockdown periods of weeks on end of um, perhaps even months, right? They know what it is like to be isolated for a long time. And so I know there's a lot of cases of people really, really mad. Um, but what can you do when the central government is basically telling you, commanding you to shut down a city for the sake of the virus prevention, which today is no more than basically a common cold, right? Especially with Omicron. You could argue the original variant, the so-called alpha variant, was very deadly, right? Uh, 
But then now we're getting a situation where Omicron is basically, I mean, you get it, you might not even know that you got it. And considering the fact that China has been touting this whole idea of zero COVID for three years, yet they just recently found out that the highest number of COVID infections in China ever, um, what does that say about zero COVID? It obviously doesn't work, right? Um, so what I think this whole thing really boils down to is the fact that there are ways to change, but it's just the Communist Party of China is not changing just because they have to stick to the politics before rationality, basically. Um, I want to see, uh, there's something else I want to say. Oh, yeah. So one key point about this, right? Um, so remember we said this whole protest has been basically giving the Western media a lot of exposure to kind of giving them ammo to attack China, right? If you're a, a Chinese Communist Party member, you'd think that, you know, this is such an embarrassing moment. And so Zhengzhou city officials had an internal document. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up. I have to find it first, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let, let me see here. I just want to quickly look this up. Zhengzhou. Okay, look at this. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, probably not. Anyways, so they had an internal document yesterday released <clears throat> that basically says, please do not harm the image and the, the glorious image of the honor and the glorious image of the city of Zhengzhou. Uh, he's saying that there's some type of trouble, but please do not follow, do not support and do not spread the information. Um, just based on that, I feel like the, the, the image keeping, the stability factor is a much bigger concern to the CCP than it is for people getting paid, perhaps even the economy. But realistically speaking, this is my opinion on this. I really don't think the CCP cares that people are being beaten up or the fact that they're not being paid. Uh, I think it's actually just to keep the mouth shut, to make this thing a little bit bigger to the point where it causes a system a systematically... I would say a, a nationwide kind of riot or protest if they can do so with a little bit of compensation. But if we're just for the economics factor, I don't think they really care. Like they could care less if hundreds of thousands of people die, right? That's the Communist Party of China. There was famine that killed millions of people. So I don't think human lives really matter to them that much. But it does matter when the fact that is the economy, the economic issue that they're getting now in the Foxconn factory becomes a political problem and that's when things get out of hand right so um nothing else to say really other than the fact that this is just getting more and more ridiculous we're already seeing people talk about leaving right so you had people hundreds of thousands of people coming in a month after hundreds of thousands of people had left and now these hundreds of thousands of people are leaving again so who the heck are you going to hire now uh <laughs> maybe more people who hadn't heard the news about Zhengzhou, maybe they'll come but, man, it's, it's going to be hard. I think iPhone supplies are going to definitely be impacted uh, by weeks. And I, I think this really, the conclusion we can draw here for us uh, on this holiday season, perhaps, is just the fact that you can't rely on China for supply chain, especially in times like these where the pandemic is, is uh, thriving in China and nowhere else. Just look at the World Cup, right? Everybody's not masked in the World Cup. Nobody cares except for Chinese people, they're saying, oh my God, like there's 80 million, 80,000 people in an arena. Nobody's wearing a mask. Nobody's getting tested. Uh, on Chinese state media, they're actually blurring out the audience to show that uh, pretending like no one is there or just to show that people aren't wearing a mask. They can't have that. So things are getting ridiculous, but uh, that's today's live stream. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel, but also make sure to comment below what you think. And also, uh, Turn on your notification bell so you never miss our newest videos. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.